Hi and welcome to Across the Desk. This week we're featuring a Zoom interview we did with Jacob Rosecrantz, a representative from the Norman area, and two bills he has going into the legislature this session to challenge the infamous HB 1775 bill about anti-diversity and basically anti-teaching anything that would make a conservative cry. Hi, Jacob. Yeah. Jacob Rosecrantz, you are representing which ha- what, what district do you represent first? Let's start there. Sure. It's House District uh, 46. And what that entails is the south part of Norman and the west part of Norman, Oklahoma. Okay. And you are a former history teacher. Are you a current one? Or you, you're still accredited? Uh, I am a uh, former history teacher. I do not. I let my... Uh, um, certification expired just because I've been a state rep for so long and you can't mm-hmm. have two state jobs. So I did have to yeah. quit, quit my job to be able to take this. You can't job. have two state jobs. That's an interesting question. So Ryan Walters, who is also the education secretary and is the superintendent, right? Is that two state jobs? I guess or, that's legal though. Uh, yeah. I don't know how that looks. I don't know why, how the, that it, it's not unprecedented. Apparently. Um, yeah. Uh, Sandy Garrett did it too back in the day. Really? So, yeah, I had to do a little Garish. bit of looking on it before I just t- tried to put everybody under the fire. I want to make sure oh, I yeah. got the facts. So, well, that's good because yeah, you know so, a lot of people don't know that really, huh? So this isn't something that isn't unprecedented. It's not something that's usual, but it's not unprecedented. It has happened before and without any problems. Correct. correct. Now, Sandy Garrett was Sandy Garrett, and Ryan Walters yeah. is Ryan Walters. So the problem comes from the fact that this regime or whatever you want to call it this this administration hasn't really been doing work in the light in the first place so you would think that they would just bend over backwards to show transparency and not yeah. do something like this but it is legal and it's not unprecedented so yeah okay, i let well, it go it a, looks bad don't get me wrong but yeah oh yeah well that's a very interesting fact you put out there and i think a lot of my viewers will appreciate that so the thing is, you have one bill in there right now, House Bill 1031, to repeal House Bill 1775. And you have that right now. And, and another thing you have, big news right here, you have a new bill that has been filed. And that is what, 10, uh, 1339, House Bill 1339. And can you explain these two bills that you have put in to come into the legislature? Yeah. First of all, uh, let's talk about the bill to repeal seven, House Bill 1775. That's House Bill 1031. I've got a lot of coverage on that. Um, and, you know, I, I wanted that. I wanted people to listen to why I have an issue with that. And, you know, speaking as a former um, uh, history teacher myself, if anybody doesn't know, House Bill 1775 was supposed to be the bill that bans CRT in our classrooms, but literally does not spell that out. It's very broadly written. Uh, basically, it says if you make any student uncomfortable because of their race or sex, then you could basically go all the way up to losing um, not only your teacher's license, but also accreditation for your school, uh, for the district, which is ridiculous. And so um, also whenever you talk about what it's trying to stop, well, okay. Yeah. Nobody really wants to teach anything that's uncomfortable for uh, because of somebody's race or sex, but what in the world are you talking about? How do you legislate that? And why is it written so broadly? I don't think it ever needed to be a bill in the first place. You know, let, let's like, it, to me, it shows that this is just one of those ideas that is caught on to show that something is happening that people are saying is happening, which would in this case be indoctrination of our kids or, or yeah. whatever it is. And then try to use clever wording to try to say, oh, no, but it's about making sure that everybody is equal and all that. And, and so you're just like, OK, well, we, we already we already know that. Why did mm-hmm. you write a bill to to prevent something like this? And then why did you put such um, think about it? Remember, there was emergency rules they tried to throw through as soon as this thing passed oh, on yeah. an emergency as well. So they were trying to say this is really happening. Well, interesting thing. I, we really haven't heard anything except for the Tulsa public schools part and the, the Mustang public schools, which those were dubious reports in the first yeah. place. Both, both were just very dubious and that was covered in the news pretty well. Mm-hmm. But um, 
to me, it always said to me, this bill doesn't need to exist. And so I let it go for a uh, last session, you know, I didn't really want to do anything with that. And yeah. so this session rolled around and, and I was just like, a repealer bill is not that hard to do. Let's go ahead and get it going, roll it, see what kind of uh, support we can get. Now I'm not an idiot. Uh, repealing yep. a bill that passed over overwhelmingly on straight party lines. It's not going to happen this year. I mean, I'm going to keep trying, you know, maybe not like keep trying yeah. every year to try to repeal this, but I want people to know that's something I'm, I'm desperately wanting to do. Um, and so then back behind that, I had already planned to write another bill having to do with house bill 7075 breaking news right here. Breaking right Just here. Child. <laughs> It's House Bill. Yeah, we kind of alluded to it. House Bill 1339. If I'm looking off mm -hmm. to the side, it's because I just filed it. And uh, so what this does. So, again, I told you I didn't think I was going to be able to um, actually repeal House Bill 7075, perhaps yeah. through a vote of the people, but not in the legislature that already passed it back in 2021. So the conversations we're having are very key about that. That's good. But this bill, what this does it provides in writing in the bill in House Bill 1775 itself the requirement for due process for any school employee who has been accused of House Bill 1775 violations yeah. and any school district which has been accused of, of any House Bill 1775 violations as well. Now, as we kind of talked to uh, talked to you about before, some of those protections may exist. I want it spelled out that you have to go through these steps um, yeah. before you can even, you know, try to take away a, stu a teacher's uh, a certificate of uh, their, their, their license or, um, or move it all the way up to the state board of education and then kind of have a sham trial or hearing, if you want to call it that. Yeah. And then actually lead to, to, um, to accreditation hits. That's not yeah. fair. So what I'm trying to do here is make House Bill 1775 more fair. If I can't destroy it, if I can't repeal it, then this is my next step. And this may actually get a little more support than people might think because, well, let's be honest, I'm pretty sure anybody within Tulsa Public Schools would be for this. <laughs> Republicans yeah. or Democrats, because that was a crappy well, thing. Um, yeah. And then also Mustang Public Schools, too. And I will be talking to yeah. those representatives and those senators in those areas to see if I can get support for it. And if I can't, at least we can still have these conversations. Because that is a real big problem with HB 1775 is the vagueness that is put into it. And I, and, and I don't think it was by accident that they put that vagueness in there. It allows them to be able to be mobile. I was what I see. Hey, we can, we can move around to different positions and either defend or attack easily. The more vague and untransparent we keep this. And I see that, especially when you we were talking about the accreditation of Mustang and Tulsa and that whole charade that they went through where they weren't able to put up evidence or they wouldn't even look at evidence or anything else. So you see where bills like what you're doing are very necessary. And, and even at that, even if the Republicans don't go for it, it does create a larger conversation, obviously, as I see on Facebook, where even one of who is that? Uh, Rob Strandridge, right? Senator Rob Standridge, who isn't in your chamber, but he's got a nice sponsored ad out, putting your name out everywhere on this. I don't. I'm, I'm positive you've seen that, and uh, so, but he's kind of helping you out too in this way, of course. You know, he, and some of the stuff he's saying is just really out there. So go on more about what do you what do you what do you intend to do with these bills, and 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 how does that broaden the conversation? Well, again, uh, you're right about uh, Senator Standridge. He's my senator, and he's a big supporter of this. He's also it seems to be a true believer, I guess. I don't know. If you're a true believer, then you're thinking that House Bill 1775 prevents racism or something. It, mm -hmm. it, it, you'll see it in his words. You'll see it in his words. Yeah. Why would anybody be against this? Little does he realize, or maybe he does, I don't know, that that's simply not the intent of the bill. The intent of the bill is to cause the problems that it's causing right now. Yeah. And then also uh, feed into the fear monger machine that these things are actually happening in mass in our schools, in our public schools, mm -hmm. which they aren't. So that that's that's one of those big issues. So already you're going to see that I have uh, to, to repeal it. Impossible. Not not going to happen. Yeah. But um, this next bill, which I just rolled out. So I'll just tell you the next steps, what I'm going to do. I'm going to reach out to um, uh, mostly the Republican representatives and senators in these areas and see if they have any interest in trying to make this more fair. I think they may. We'll see. Um, that means Mustang and Tulsa areas, which there's plenty of Republican representatives. I'll talk to my Democrat oh, yeah. representatives too, but they're going to be mm -hmm. on board because we all agree yeah. with this. 
but uh and see if we can get some support to just start flowing this way to make this thing more fair i mean it's not perfect it still exists but yeah. at least now if you get a- accused of something so from something as broad as house bill 1775 you know that in the statute itself you have to go through certain steps which is what house bill um 1339 provides and that's the one you just put in just like 10 mm-hmm. minutes ago put in today yeah. now on house bill 1031 do you have support for that already have you already talked to some people What's what's going on with that one? Well, strangely enough, Kit, uh, you're going to notice I, I got a lot of support for it, but nothing out loud. And they're never going to let it move. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. A lot mm-hmm. of folks, even across the aisle, they'll never say this. They didn't like that bill, mostly moderates, because of the same reasons that I have with it. The same problems I have with it, too. Not to mention, you'll see if I I, I, I did kind of a big social media push and even got on the news talking about how it's an example of government overreach. It's Uh, weird how us Democrats and the minority now have become like these local control warriors when that used to be a big Republican, um, uh, you know, stake, uh, one of their, one of their big pieces. And it's weird how control less government. Yeah. Yeah. Less government. Now it's like us. We're like, get out of our school, get out of our pregnant ladies, uh, bodies. What are you doing? Get out of here. Any, any, it's very strange that that kind of has flipped, but you'd be surprised how much support I have for that. But that bill's not going to make it through. Leadership yeah. will never let that go, and the no. governor would never sign that. Probably so, make it um, out of committee, I imagine. But, yeah, but it wouldn't it, even go starting the conversations was important. That really is. I think, I think yeah. when I saw that, and then I see all the Republicans losing their heads over it, and then it's all in the news, I'm like, well, that's the that that that's the goal, you know. If it's not going to get passed or anything else, it's at least to get it out there and start a conversation about it and get people thinking. So maybe we can do yeah, some and a mission accomplished on that. Honestly, exactly. So good job, man, Jacob. That way, I can go back Seriously. behind, which I'm gonna as soon as we get off this show, I'm gonna go ahead and make my post on my next bill, House Bill 1339, and see where what what that can do too. I have kind of a decent, yeah. you know, social media following and that helps mm-hmm. it does people don't yeah, understand does. how much that helps they're kind of echo chambers but that's okay yeah. too because then we get our supporters involved on something and we can get a little more support and then it can catch on uh exactly. so that's kind of my next goal for this and i kind of follow us a, a, a formula i've been doing this for a long long time um and it's hard to get bills passed already as a member of the minority so you have to get yeah. major major uh, support on the other side of the aisle which is my goal that's my goal my mm-hmm. goal is to try to get a Republican Senate author on each one of my bills. And mm-hmm. uh, that's the key. Cause once you have that, then you can possibly get a hearing. And then once you have a hearing and you have a Senate author, then it should be able to go on the floor, but that's where it gets tough. That's where yeah, minority bills get thrown all the way down. No matter what you have going on, how many, doesn't yeah. matter how many you have, you'll get like maybe one or two heard in the very last few days of session. That's yeah. the way it usually works. Yeah. Me knowing that, doesn't mean I'm just banging my head against the wall on some of my bills. I've got pretty popular bills so far. I've got Republican authors on two of them. I'm not going to name names okay, just good. yet because I want it to be official first before I do okay. that. Um, meaning it shows up, you know, when you look. Yeah, at it. exactly. But uh, a, a, it, it, that's just kind of what we do. So we we get these ideas. And right now, January, people are like, January is kind of a dead time of the year. No, it's the busiest time of the year because you want to get all these steps done well before uh, they get put into committees, well before. Um, if yeah. you don't, and experience is what taught me this, then your bills normally die, especially as a member of the minority party. Those things, one yeah. little hiccup, and I'm talking one tiny little hiccup, like say it gets put in the wrong committee and you have to put it back in another committee. Yeah. That'll kill a bill. That'll and kill a bill. so you have to really kind of follow along and make sure that your bills are doing good. And that's where our legislative assistants come in. Without without a well-trained legislative assistant, we're nothing. So oh, yeah. um and it's just a just a bunch of teamwork. So right now, like I said, my legislative assistant filed the bill that I authored, and then um, she filed the three. I had three that I just authored just now, um, right. and that's it for me. That's my top eight for the year. We were only allowed to do eight in the house. So you're only allowed to do eight, eight in the house. Done. Yeah, we have a cap, right. which thank goodness. I wish the Senate yeah. had a cap. They can do as many as they want. <laughs> because yeah, otherwise you're never going to get through the session, or even not even part of those bills. And some of the good ones will be lost in the mix, I imagine, if you don't limit. So that's probably a good no idea. No doubt. Yeah, well, I'd like to cap it even less, like three, because honestly, I think we have way too much on the books in the first place. There are yeah. real, honest-to-goodness legislative ideas that are great that can actually help the state. 
I like to think that I offer those every year. <laughs> yeah. But, um, and it's not just me. I think a lot of le legislators do too, especially on my side of the aisle. That's the sad thing since we don't have political balance. I watch every year these wonderful ideas that can help Oklahomans on many different ways just die or go by the wayside just simply because we have a D or, or we don't have an R by Yeah. Us. Exactly. And that's kind of the way it was back when the Democrats were in charge, too. So this is not unprecedented. It's just ridiculous. Yeah. And I wish that we could change that, uh, yeah. that, that one aspect of this. Yeah. And gerrymandering isn't going to make that any easier. You know, gerrymandering is where we're at right now. Yeah, that is where we're that's at. That's why we're where we're at. That and uh, every race yeah. now, if you look at it, it's almost 60 40 Republican to Democrat. You know, almost every district that had that isn't a statewide race. And you look no. at that and you're like, no, that's just not, that's not. That's, you got your safe no blue way. seats. You got your yeah. safe blue seats, mostly in Oklahoma yeah. City and Tulsa and mm -hmm. Norman. My seat's not safe. I know it's in Norman and people think that yeah. it's, you know, Norman's blue. No, mine's been gerrymandered to where it's yeah. a plus 8% Republican yeah. district. And I'm a Democrat. So I win consistently, but not easily. I I, I just finished up my fifth campaign in six years. Oh, yeah. Um mm. Oh, yeah, no. it's not. Yeah, I can tell you, I can tell you when it comes to gerrymandering, this all started back with a really, really smart guy. And his name was Glenn Coffey. And you remember him? Yes. You remember that guy? Yeah, smart guy. He's yeah. the strategist. He is the strategist that put all this together when it comes to how we do even our initiative petitions and stuff like that. The guy gamed it. He really did. And he was really smart, though, because he knew, hey, you can't put them on death ground. So we'll give them these 22 seats that they can compete in and nobody can run in these other seats. And now they've gone through and now they're all there's there's there, there. Nobody even took the time to think, hey, we need to give these guys some seats that they just concentrate on because now they're all gerrymandered for Republicans. There's a few, like you say, in the urban areas, the dense urban areas. But there's so much well, less than Edmund 22 now. And, and yes, the urban areas, those areas. Areas will be your battlegrounds from now on, but they're gerrymandered yeah. too. You know, you yeah, can gerrymander are. a seat in Edmond easily. Oh, yeah. Um, so, but they'll be tough, but those are definitely areas we're going to focus on. Um, yeah. There's areas that should not have uh, a far right Republican representing them. They're just, oh, they're yeah. just shouldn't. Maybe, a, just maybe shouldn't. a moderate Republican, which I really don't like that yeah. idea either because yeah. they'll just be part of the majority, which votes as a block. Mm -hmm. So I always yeah. tell people, you know, give a Democrat a chance, but it's really about finding the right person to run in those races, not just some yeah. random Democrat. You see what I'm saying? Especially mm -hmm. in these uphill battles. I wasn't chosen for this job. I It was my yeah. force of will um, when I was a teacher and I decided I wanted to get my crazy teacher voice up at the Capitol. And that's why I work so hard on it. There you go. That's why I'm still working so hard. <laughs> and so <laughs> that keeps me going through the dark times. And there are some major dark times. Um, but well, And if you don't have that, then you're probably not going to stick around. Um, yeah. Or if also... Again, what I just finished up my fifth campaign, five out of mm -hmm. six. I won five, oh, wow. I lost one. That's a lot. And that's a lot of yeah, work. It is. And yeah, for, it is. for what's the reward to go back in the largest minority in the state, I believe, and watch a lot of our bills die. That's not the point of what I'm doing. My point is yeah. to build these relationships with people across the aisle and um and try to pass whatever good legislation we can and beat down the things that I think will really harm our state and our public schools. That's, that's what I'm doing. That's my goal. Excellent. Well, Jacob, what's about all the time we have for this episode, about 15 minutes or so. I really thank you so much. I didn't get to tell you at the beginning, but thank you so much for taking the time to appear on across the desk and give us your thoughts and tell us about these two bills you have that are going through the legislature. Thank you so much. I can't express my gratitude for you to appearing today. I really yeah, appreciate thank it. Thank you. And thank you for bending over uh, backwards and, and making sure that I had the accommodations. Cause it, like I said, it's hard for me to do in-person yeah. stuff. And so thank it you so much. Sometimes. Yourself. No, this, no problem. Great. And I'm going to make a thank promise you, to you. I'm going to try to make it in person and do in person once session starts. So we'll, that, oh, that'd be great. I would have, if I could training. have you on later in the season, that'd be awesome. And if you could appear in my studio where, where I do the interviews, that would be great. I would love to meet you in person. Seriously. I'm making it a promise right now as we, as we speak. So <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. We'll see you, you soon. Bye-bye.